Welcome to Animated Science Biology. Today we are looking at active transport, which is the process of moving molecules across the membrane using energy. So just a little review from last time. We took a look at the structure in our first video, and then we looked at passive transport of the membrane in our second video. Uh, but all of the passive transport mechanisms, including facilitated diffusion and osmosis, is going to be moving molecules from high concentration to low concentration. And so that concentration gradient, high to low, is the process or it's the mechanism that the molecules use to move. However, in active transport, Molecules are going to use energy to move from low concentration to high concentration, so against the concentration gradient. And the way that they're going to do this is by using energy in the form of ATP. So to look at an example of this, we have a scenario set up here with two different ions. And just a quick note, Ions are hydrophilic, which means they are impermeable unless they have a protein. So the pink ions here are sodium, and the yellow ions are potassium. So in the scenario, we have a high concentration of sodium on the outside and a low concentration of sodium on the inside. Also, we have a high concentration of potassium on the inside and a low concentration of potassium on the outside. So we kind of have these ions flipped as far as their concentration gradient. So if there was a channel for these ions, sodium would flow into the cell and potassium would flow out of the cell until an equal concentration of both ions on each of the membrane exist. However, most of our cells actually want to keep a high concentration of sodium on the outside of the cell and a low concentration of potassium on the outside of the cell because this is going to set up a normal environment for something called a membrane potential, which we'll get to in a future video. So to do that, they need a special kind of carrier called a pump. So the pump is able to transport these ions against the concentration gradient. And it does this by using the power of ATP hydrolysis. Now that word is really just the splitting of a fancy molecule called adenosine triphosphate. And we're going to be looking at that more closely in a future video um, all about ATP hydrolysis and ATP synthesis. So right now, just look at that as kind of an energy packet molecule. More specifically, zooming into the pump, we can see that it's got a binding site for each ion and a binding site for the ATP molecule. So at first is going to allow the sodium ions to bind and ATP to bind. Then ATP is going to break off one of its phosphates, which the energy inside of that bond is going to force a conformational change in the protein to release the sodium outside of the membrane. At that point, potassium binding sites are now revealed, which is going to allow the potassium to bind. So when the potassium actually does bind, it kicks off the free phosphate, which causes a second conformational change and opens the door for potassium to come into the cell. So the main point of all this is that pumps are going to be able to transport small molecules against their concentration gradient. So this is going to be the main process of our active transport. So active transport actually has another facet called vesicular transport, which moves molecules using vesicles. Uh, so we're going to see that in the next video. Uh, so go ahead and go check that out. We'll see you there. If you enjoyed my video, please give me a like and subscribe if you want to watch more or if you're following along with your class. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video. I am new to the YouTube space, um, so I appreciate any critique or constructive criticism that you guys may have. Um, and I appreciate you guys watching. You have a good one.